Hello there, I'm Bobby in Blue, and on this channel we talk about all things tech. Recently, I've noticed a lot more people shooting with 360 cameras. On a recent cruise that we went on, I saw four people shooting with 360 cameras. So more people shooting in 360 means that more people will wanna be editing in 360. So today I wanna to talk about how to edit 360 footage in Final Cut Pro 10. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using footage from the Insta360 One RS One Inch Edition. Say that name 10 times fast. First, I need to stitch the footage together. So connect your memory card to your computer and open the Insta360 Studio app. Click the open button to browse your files. Select from the files on your memory card and hit open. I like to choose mine by the date ranges. That way I know I have all of the clips that I shot from a particular day. Once your files are open, they'll be on the left of the screen in a list form. To view each video, you can double click on it and it will bring it up in the viewer. The Insta360 Studio app has a lot of great features and an editor that you can use as well. But for this video, we're just going to use it to stitch our videos together. So what is stitching your videos? Well, 360 cameras typically record one video file from this lens and one video file from this lens and the stitching process combines those two video files together so that you have a full 360 video. Click and select each of the videos that you want to work with, then click the export button. The export window gives you a bunch of options for exporting. In this case we want 360 video. Next I'll select the place where I want the videos to be saved, the original resolution, highest quality, remove grain, flow state stabilization, and horizon lock. Then I'll hit export. In this video, we'll be talking about how to use 360 footage inside of a traditional aspect ratio. Final Cut Pro does allow you to edit 360 immersive video as well, but I'll save that topic for another time. I'll be working with some clips from my son's recent Ninjathon. I'll start by creating a new library and name it Ninjathon. I'll set up the project for a 1920 by 1080. We can import our 360 files just like you would import regular footage into Final Cut Pro. I always like to drop my first clip into the timeline and then move around inside of that clip till I find my subject or the place where the action is happening so that I can set my in and out points. There are two main ways to move around or to reframe your clip in Final Cut Pro. You can select the reorient tool here and use it to drag your image around like this. Or you can use the reorient section of the video inspector tab shown here. In this section, you will see the 360 reframing controls. Tilt is for tilting up and down, pan is for panning left and right, roll is for rotating, and your field of view lets you adjust how wide your view is. Some think of this like zooming in or out. And last up, mapping. You can choose between Tiny Planet and Normal. Tiny Planet allows you to create shots like this and gives you a little more free moving range on warping your image. Normal keeps your shots looking more like what you might see out of a standard camera even though it'll still let you move around the 360 image. For the sake of this video, I'm going to select the normal mode. So now that we know how to navigate, let's go to the start of the clip and navigate around so that I can see my son at the starting line. I know that he starts his run on the box with the black carpet. So I'll move my clip around in space till I find the box. Then I'll move the playhead slowly through the clip until I see him start to jump off the starting box. I'll back up a few frames and use the keyboard shortcut option left bracket to trim my clip to this point. You can also use the blade tool to cut at this point and then delete the part that you don't want. But I love the option bracket shortcut. In this challenge, the kids start and stop at the same location. So I know that I can scrub to the very end of the clip looking for that same box. I want to be able to follow my son around the course, so I'll use keyframes to follow the action as he runs around. I'm going to right click on my clip and select the show video animation. So this way I can see where each of my keyframes are as I add them. A keyframe in this case refers to a point in time, but also a framing of the clip as well. So this keyframe is for this point in time and at this precise framing around the 360 image. Once you set your first keyframes, Final Cut Pro will add keyframes automatically when that parameter is changed or adjusted at a different point in time. For example, in the first part of his run, I will go to the point in time where he starts his run and then move the frame to just the right spot and set my first keyframes. I'm going to be using all the properties, so I will set a keyframe for each one. I will then go to the place and time that I want to add my next keyframe and adjust the framing to follow my son around the course. You can see here that Final Cut Pro added the keyframes in for me when I adjusted the parameter. When it comes to choosing the point in time that I want my next keyframe, 
I've always found it easy to use the points where the action kind of bounces back from one point to another. So just before he turns around or the time he touches each marker. Here's my starting keyframe. You can see that it's just as he's about to leave the box. And then my next keyframe comes right at the time that he touches the marker. And when I play it back, Final Cut Pro moves the clip from one point to another over time. Then I'll continue the process of placing keyframes to follow my son around the course. So a few things to note here. I like to set my keyframe at the start of each move and then another set of keyframes at the end of each move. This will allow the movement to be as natural as possible. There are, however, times when I will need to place more keyframes over shorter periods of time, like this section here where I thought my son was going to go one way and instead he went the other. So I ended up in the shop for a few seconds while I got things back on track. In most of this clip, I need long, slower movement for my reframing but in this case, I needed a faster movement. This is the longer, slower moving section, and this is the shorter, faster moving section. Smaller gaps, or less time between keyframes, equals faster moves. Larger gaps and more time between keyframes equals slower moves. Also, I need more keyframes to accomplish the move on the shorter section, and less keyframes to accomplish the move on the longer section. Less is happening over more time in the longer section, and more is happening over a shorter period of time in the short section. So you could say that the distance between keyframes accounts for the speed of the movement. One huge opportunity that Final Cut has that I really wish that they would fix is that there aren't any easing options for keyframing. Instead of slower easing movements, it's all just linear and at the same pace. This would be on the top of my list for future features to be added to Final Cut Pro 10. Okay, these are my last keyframes that I needed to add. So let's see how things look. This is one of the major reasons that I love 360 cameras. I was able to record my son's entire ninja run, but instead of putting a bunch of effort into making sure I had the perfect shot with each move, I was able to just kind of hold the camera out and stay more present and in the moment while still getting some great footage. 360 cameras open the door for many possibilities and allow you to get difficult shots with ease. And now you know how to edit your 360 footage in Final Cut Pro. If you got something out of this video, please drop a like below. And if you love tech like I love tech, then make sure to subscribe for more content just like this. I'm Bobby in Blue, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.